Here we go. It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Thank you for the pencil holder, Ben. It looks amazing. Built by Ben. Yeah. Here we go with chapter three. We have now made it through all the lessons and we're gonna be looking at some of the past paper exam questions. Oh, it's an exciting moment. So, let's start off with this question from the 2018 paper two. A straight line has equation two x take away five y equals 20. Find the coordinates of the point where this line crosses the y-axis. Miranda, help us out. How would we do this one? Yes, Miranda, you are perfectly right. If you imagine you've got your x and your y axis, we've got the x axis down here, we've got the y axis up here. Well, we're wanting to find the point where the graph crosses the y axis. So it might cross down here, or it might cross here, or it might cross here, or it might cross here. You get the idea. It's going to be somewhere on this line. But for every single one of these points on this line, what is the x coordinate always going to be? Brilliant, it's always going to be zero. Like this point here, it might be zero, two, for example. Or this point down here might be zero, negative three. We know that x coordinate is always going to be zero for a point that's on the y axis. So, we know this y axis is known as the y intercept. And at the y intercept, as I just said, the x value is always going to be zero. So, in other words, you're going to have zero and then that value for the y intercept. So, in order to work out where this straight line crosses your y axis, all you've got to do is you've got to replace the x with zero because we know x is going to be zero where it crosses. Again, it's going to be zero two or zero negative three or zero five or zero zero or zero something. X is always zero. So we've got two x take away five y equals 20. If you replace x with zero, we'd have two times zero take away five y equals 20. Well, we know two times zero is zero, so that's zero take away five y is 20. In other words, negative five y is 20. If you multiply both sides by negative one, or add 5y to both sides, take away 20 from both sides, you will end up with positive 5y equals negative 20. And then from there, if you divide both sides by 5, you'll get y equals negative 4. What you could also do here, I suppose, is you could divide both sides by negative 5. Dividing both sides by negative 5 will still give you y equals negative 4. That means then, well, we're asked for the coordinates of the point where the line crosses the y-axis. Don't just write y equals negative 4. What would you be writing? Well done, George. You're perfectly right. It's going to cross the y-axis at 0, negative 4. And that will be the coordinate where it crosses. Woo! High five, people. Yeah. Here we go, next past paper question. This one is from 2014, paper one, so it's non-calculator. A straight line has equation 4x plus 3y equals 12. Part A, find the gradient of this line, and then B, find the coordinates of the point where the line crosses the x-axis. So, part A, find the gradient of this line. How do we go about doing that? Can you help us out? Jamie. Yeah, Jamie, you are perfectly right, good. In order to read off the gradient, or the y-intercept if we were asked for it, what we have to do is we have to rearrange this equation. We have to make sure it's in the form of y equals mx plus c, or specifically just y equals. You've got to get the y just on its own. So we're starting off with this equation, 4x add 3y equals 12, and we have to rearrange that to get y just on its own. If you think about the y, well, what are we doing with the y? Well, we're multiplying it by the 3, and we're also adding on this 4x. So we've got this positive 4x on this side, and we've got the 3 times y. If you think about bid mass or board mass backwards, you would undo anything that you're adding or subtracting first. So with that y, you're multiplying it by 3, but you've also on this side got the positive 4x. So start by subtracting 4x from both sides. So that'll leave you with the positive 3y, and that will be equal to the 12 takeaway 4x. So you're really moving the 4x to the other side, and the positive goes to the negative. Think about it that way if you like. Uh, from there, we've got 3y. Again, you want to get y just on its own, so you need to get rid of that times by 3. 
The opposite of times by three is divide by three. Perfect. So on the other side, you would also have to divide by three. Good. So really, with both sides, you just divide by three. What I've also done with this is I've also put that negative 4x plus 12. So I've just switched that back to front. You don't have to do that. Uh, some people find it a little easier, uh, but it makes no difference whatsoever. Uh, we've still got the negative 4x, still got the positive 12. And from there, yes, just divide both sides by 3. If you divide by 3 then, well, really, the number of x we've got, we've got the negative 4. But remember, we're dividing that by 3, which means we've really got negative 4 divided by 3 x and this plus 12 well again the plus 12 we're also dividing that by 3 so we've really got plus 4 because that's the 12 divided by 3 gives us the 4. We were asked for the gradient of the line just remember the number in front of x shows us the gradient so in front of x here we've got 4 thirds but not just 4 thirds we've also got the negative so it's negative 4 thirds so you can say then that the gradient is negative 4 thirds. If we were asked for the y-intercept, what would the y-intercept be? Brilliant, the y-intercept would be just the number that's on its own. So the y-intercept, if we were asked for it, uh, would be positive four. So you know the graph would cross at zero, four. But we're not asked for that. Part B, find the coordinates of the point where the line crosses the x-axis. Once again, just gonna draw this out. So we've got our x-axis and we've got our y-axis. Just gonna put x here and y here. So we want to know the point where it crosses the x-axis. Again, similar to one of the other past paper questions that we did, uh, the graph might cross the x-axis here, it might cross here, it might cross here, it might cross here, it might cross here. Hopefully if you've done that other question, I think it was the very first one, uh, how would you go about solving this one? Perfect, brilliant. Every single y coordinate for each of these points is going to be zero. For example, this point here might be the point five, zero. This point here might be three, zero. The points are not moving up or down from the x-axis, so the y value has to be zero. So you can say then that the line crosses the x-axis when y equals zero. Again, the points here, that may be negative four something, but the something has to be zero because it's not moving up and it's not moving down. It's just negative four zero. Or here it might be negative six zero, just making numbers up. But the y is always going to be zero. So what you can do then is you can substitute y equals zero into our original equation. If you sub y equals zero in here, what it'll do is it'll let you find x because x will then be the only unknown. So we've got four x add three y equals 12. But if we replace y with zero, we'd have four x add three times zero is 12. We know three times zero is zero. So we've got four x add zero equals 12. Uh, so in other words, just four x is 12. And if you divide both sides by four, you'll end up with x equals three, uh, which means then that the graph will cross the x-axis at the point three, zero, because x is the three, but doink, and the y was zero, but doink. Woo! Next question from 2022. Oh, so long ago. Paper one, again, non-calculator question. Find the equation of the line passing through the points negative three, negative one, and negative five, seven. Give the equation in its simplest form. Woo! So we want the equation of a straight line. How do we go about getting the equation of a straight line if we're given two points? What is the first thing you work out? Brilliant, you have to work out the gradient first of all. So to work out the gradient, you use the two points, the negative three, negative one, and the negative five, seven. Just remember for the points, you've got an X value and a Y value. And for this point here, an X value and a Y value. I'm calling this point one, so X one and Y one, and I'm calling this point two, so X two and Y two. The equation is m for gradient equals y2 take away y1 over x2 take away x1. So if you sub these values in, you will have y2 take away y1 as 7 take away negative 1. And x2 take away x1 will be negative 5 take away negative 3. This then, if you take away a negative, that would become plus. So it becomes 7 plus 1, which is 8. And negative five, take away negative three, be careful with the negatives. You're starting at negative five in a number line. First number shows you where you start. If you take away a negative, well, two negatives make a positive, so it'll become plus three. So start at negative five in a number line, and then add on three. I like to think about it with temperature. If the temperature was negative five degrees, and then it went up, 
by 3, it would be a negative 2 degrees. It would be closer towards 0. Uh, we've got 8 divided by negative 2. Uh, 8 divided by 2 is 4. And because we've got a positive and a negative number, the answer will be negative. So negative 4 will be your answer for the gradient. Your straight line equation is always of the form y equals mx plus c. We have just worked out what m is. We know m is the gradient and we know that is negative 4. But as well as working out m, we also have to work out the y-intercept. If you're given a graph, sometimes you can see where the graph crosses and it'll tell you where it crosses. It might say it crosses at 0, 7. Perfect, you know the y-intercept is 7. But if you're not given that, what you need to do is you need to substitute both the gradient and one of the points into the straight line equation. If you do that, you'll sub in one of the points, so you'll be substituting in x and y. You'll also sub in m, meaning the only thing left to work out will be this c, and you can easily do that. So to do that, start off with y equals mx plus c, sub in one of the points, pick any point you like, it makes no difference. I'm using negative 5, 7. So I'm replacing the y with, well, that's the x-coordinate and that's the y-coordinate. You know that, I've got it down here as well. So I'm replacing the y with the 7. I'm replacing the m with the gradient. The gradient was negative 4, so you replace that. And replace the x with the first uh, value there in the bracket, which is negative 5. As you can see, c is the only thing left to work out, so just work it out. So 7 equals negative 4 times negative 5. Two negatives again make a positive when you're multiplying, so two negatives make a plus, and that'll be 4 times 5, which is 20. So 7 equals 20 add c. If you take away 20 from both sides, you will end up with c being negative 13, meaning we have found both the gradient and the y-intercept. Once you know the gradient, and the y-intercept, you can put a big smile on that face because you've pretty much got your answer. Because all you've got to do next is you rewrite y equals mx plus c with replacing the gradient at negative 4 and replace c with negative 13. You can always write plus negative 13 if you like, but when you add a negative, really you subtract. So it's probably best just writing take away 13 there. So y equals negative 4x, take away 13. Woo! And that's the answer. High five. Example four, or past paper example four. This one here is from the 2017 paper, and it's from paper one, so again, a non-calculator question. The diagram shows the straight line joining A and B. Find the equation of the line in its simplest form. So you can see here, we have the point A up here with negative one six, and we've got this point B as well with three negative two. To work out the equation of the line, what we need to do is we need to start thinking gradient, we need to think y-intercept, and then we need to think equation goes through those. So gradient point equation, gradient y-intercept equation, that's what you're thinking. So to get the gradient, we need to think about the two points. We've got negative 1, 6, and 3, negative 2. Remember, at each point, you've got an x and a y coordinate, it's alphabetical, so x and y, x and y, call one of them point 1, so x1, y1, and one of them point 2, so x2, y2. The gradient equation is still y2 take y1 over x2 take away x1. It always will be. And if you sub these values in, y2 take away y1 becomes negative 2 take away 6. And x2 take away x1 becomes 3 take away negative 1. Negative 2 take away 6. If the temperature was negative 2 degrees and it dropped by 6, it would go down to negative 8. And we've got 3 take away negative 1. Starting at 3 in a number line, if you take away a negative, 2 negatives make a positive, so that becomes plus. So you'd have 3 plus 1, which is 4. We've got a negative divided by a positive. The signs are different, so it's going to be a negative answer. And 8 divided by 4 is 2. So we've got negative 2 for our gradient. With the y-intercept, we do not know what this point is. You can see it crosses over the y-axis, but at what? We do not have a scooby. So we need to try and work it out a different way. And to do that, what we do is we take both the gradient... And one of the points, use any point you like, and we sub it into the straight line equation, y equals mx plus c. The point I'm going to use is the negative 1, 6, but if you use the other point, you'll get the exact same answer. It makes no difference which one you're using. 
What you do then is you can replace y with y, so that's replacing that with the 6. You can replace m with the gradient with what that is, so that's the negative 2. Replace x with that value as well, so that's the negative 1. And remember, when they're beside each other, you times them. So you'd have 6 equals negative 2 times by negative 1, and keep plus c because we don't know what c is. c is the y-intercept, is what we're working out. Because it's the only unknown, we can work it out. Negative 2 times negative 1 gives us 2. Two negatives make it positive. So we'd have 6 equals 2 add c, and we know from that 2 add what is 6? Well, it's 4. So we know c is 4. From that then, our equation y equals mx plus c becomes dot 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 dot. Help us out! Hurry! Brilliant. You would have y equals m as the gradient is negative 2, so you'd have negative 2x, and c is your y-intercept. It's a positive 4, so you'll have plus 4. Woo! Well done, Hurry! Next one! Here is another past paper example. So, from the 2016 paper, this is paper 1. A farmer records the weight of his calves. The scatter graph over here shows the relationship between the age in months and the weight, W, in kilograms of the calves. A best fit line has beautifully been drawn. Ooh, lovely. Point D represents a three-month-old calf, which weighs 100 kilograms. And point E represents a 15-month-old calf, weighing 340 kilograms. Oof. Part A. Find the equation of the best fit line in terms of A and W. And then later on, B. Find the equation to estimate the weight of a one-year-old calf. As I said, 2016, paper 1. So the first thing we need to do is work out the equation of the best fit line. And to work out the equation of a line, you know it's a straight line, so you need to think gradient point equation, or gradient y-intercept equation. So the gradient's what we want first. But for the gradient, we need two points. What are the two points? Well, here it's not as obvious because they're not saying here is the point. Here is negative 5, 2, and negative 6, 8. What they're doing is they're putting it into this amazing story about some cows. So, it tells you point D here represents a three-month-old calf which weighs 100 kilograms, which means that for D, in the age, well, you came along three months, you would have come along to three. And then up in the weight, if you're going up the y-axis, you would have come up to 100 kilograms. So if you go along there, that would have been 100. So if you think about that as a coordinate, well, you came along 3, so the x value is 3, and the y value, you went up to 100, because that was the weight. So that there as a coordinate would be 3, 100, in brackets. The same with E, with point E, that represents a 15-month-old calf. So in the age, you would have started at 0, just where the x and the y axis cross, and you would have gone along to 15 months. So if you came down here at that value, that would have been 15. You would have gone up the way as well in the y-axis and the weight would have increased all the way up to here. And if you draw a line along, that would have been you going up to the weight of that calf, which was 340. So, whoops, that was badly drawn, but it's 340. If you imagine that then as a coordinate, you came along 15 and you went up weight-wise to 340. So that would be the coordinate there. Meaning, you do have two points. You've got 3, 100, and 15, 340, just from these two sentences here with points D and point E. There's an X value and a Y value, an X value and a Y value, call one of them point 0.1 and one of them point 0.2. Again, it doesn't matter which one you call point 0.1 or which one you call point 0.2. To work out the gradient, you would have Y2 take away Y1 over X2 take away X1. Y2 take away Y1 would be 340 take away 100. And x2 take away x1 would be 15 take away 3. If you work that out, 340 take away 100 would be 240. And 15 take away 3 is 12. If you have 240 divided by 12, what's a quick way of doing that? Well, if you cover up the 0, you've got 24 divided by 12. 24 divided by 12 is 2. And if you put the 0 back on, you would end up just with 20. So look for a quick way when you're doing this without a calculator. Again, it's paper 1, it's non-calculator. So we know the gradient is going to be 20. Once we've got the gradient, we have to work out the y-intercept. Again, looking at this diagram, it is not clear where it crosses the y-axis, so we're going to have to try and work it out. And to work it out, what you can do is you can take one of the points and you can take the gradient 
and you can sub them into y equals mx plus c. Use either point, it makes no difference. I'm just gonna use one with smaller numbers, use three and 100, and I'm gonna use the gradient, which was 20. I'm gonna replace m with the gradient, y with 100, and the x with three. And if you do that, the only thing missing will be c. So you can work it out. So from there, you've got 100 equals 20 times by three, add c. 20 times three is 60, so 100 equals 60, add c. Take 60 off both sides, and c equals 40. Woo! So we know then that the gradient's 20 and c is 40. We've worked out the gradient and we've worked out the y-intercept. What we can do from there then is work out the equation. So the equation of a straight line, y equals mx plus c. We can replace m with 20, replace c with 40, and that's almost our answer. What you need to do whenever you get one of these questions is go back and read the question, make sure you've answered it fully. It says here, find the equation of the best fit line, which we've done, but find it in terms of A and W, which means we're not looking for X and Y, we're wanting an A and a W. But which is which? Well, what you do is you look at your X axis and your Y axis. Remember, this here is our X axis, and this here is our Y axis. And our Y axis, instead of calling it Y, well, in the question, they put a big W beside it, and it represents the weight. So we know that the weight is Y. So the weight W will replace Y. So we're going to have W equals. And with the X axis, well, the X axis, we're calling A for age. So A is going to be what replaces X. So we can then say that W equals 20A add 40. And that will be our answer. Woo! With part B, use your equation to estimate the weight of a one-year-old calf. So that was the equation that we came up with in part A, W equals 20A add 40. But what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to use it to estimate the weight of this little calf. So to do that, what we do is we think, well, a one-year-old calf, we know is age. But if you think about this, well, it's saying the age is in months. So we can't just substitute one into our equation. What would we sub in? Perfect, yeah, we'd sub in 12 because one year is the same as 12 months and the age in this story is in months. So we can say then that W would equal 20 times by 12 because we're replacing the age with 12. That's the age of this calf. And we've still got plus 40. 20 times 12 is 240, so W equals 240 plus 40, which gives us 280, which means then the weight of this one-year-old calf will be around 280 kilograms. Yeah! Here we go, last past paper example. This is from the 2018 paper one. If you're looking for another example on this, check out the last lesson. There was an example, a very, very similar, with Tico's taxis. But here's another example for you as well. The cost of Tom's taxis depends on the distance travelled. The graph shows the cost, C, in pounds of a journey against the distance travelled, D, in miles. Point A represents a journey of 8 miles, which costs 14 pounds. And point B, up here, represents a journey of 12 miles, which costs 20 pounds. Find the equation of the line in terms of C and D. And then part B, use your equation to work out the cost of a five mile journey. So the first thing we need is a couple of points because we're wanting the equation of a line. And for the equation of a line, you think gradient point equation or gradient y intercept equation. So we need two points. But what it's telling us in the story is that point A represents a journey of eight miles. So in other words, from zero, we came along a distance of eight. And then we started going up in the y-axis and we went up to a height of, well, 14. It tells us there it costs 14 pounds, so that height would be at 14. So if we think about that as a coordinate, that coordinate will be 8, 14, because we went along 8 and up 14, which it tells us in this little story right here. Point B represents a journey of 12 miles. So for that one from 0, we came along to 12 so put 12 down here, and then we started going up in the y-axis and we went up to a height of, well, it says the journey cost 20 pounds. So from here, if you go straight along to your y-axis, well, it's going to cost 20. So again, if you think about that as a coordinate, bracket, you'd have 12, comma, 20. Close bracket. 
So we've now got these two points. We've got the 8, 14 and the 12, 20. Woo! What we need to do next? Well, you know it's the gradient we're working out. So, to work out the gradient, Aaron, brilliant. Y2 take Y1 over X2 take away X1. Woo! Y2 take away Y1 will be 20 take away 14. X2 take away X1 will be 12 take away 8. If you work that out, you will get 6 over 4. And that simplifies to... Good, well done, Charlotte. It simplifies to 3 over 2. Or you could write it as decimal with 1.5. Either way, makes no difference. We want the equation of the line. We've got the gradient. We now need the y-intercept. How do we go about getting the y-intercept? Because it's not clear here where the graph crosses. How do we know what point this is? Because I don't know just by looking. What do we do? Help me out, Huey. Brilliant, yes. What we do is we take one of the points and we take the gradient and we sub them into y equals mx plus c. Use either of the points you like. I'd probably try and avoid negatives and use smaller numbers as well. Well, there's no negatives, but there are smaller numbers. Remember, that's x and that's y. So we replace the y with 14. We replace m with the gradient. You know, the gradient's the 1.5. And x was 8 in here in this point. So we can replace x with 8. So we'd have 14 equals the 1.5 times by 8 plus c. 1.5 times 8 or 1 and a half eighths. And imagine in terms of money if you want with £1.50 times 8. Either way, it's going to be 12. So you'd have 14 equals 12 add C. So 12 add what's 14? Well, it's obviously 2. Or take 12 off both sides. So we know C is 2. From that then, we've got the gradient. That was 1.5. And we've just worked out the y-intercept. That was 2. So we know then that the equation y equals mx plus C. We can replace m with 1.5 and replace C with 2. Two. But, no, 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 that is not the final answer because the equation has to be in terms of C and D. So, looking up here in our y-axis, well, it's not called our y-axis anymore. It's called C. It's the C-axis. We replace y with C. So, do that in the equation. So, we'd have C equals the x-axis. Well, if you look at the x-axis, well, we're no, call, no longer calling that x as well. There's a d beside it. So we replace x with d. So do that in the equation as well. So we'd have 1.5 times d instead of x. And plus 2 will just stay as it is. Yeah. Part B, use your equation to work out the cost of a five-mile journey. So our equation that we came up with was c equals 1.5d add 2. If you think about this, think back to the question. This is about Tom. He's driving taxis. He's charging people. He's taking them from A to B or C to D or E to F. He's taking them from one place to another. He's going from Carnoustie to Dundee. He's going to be charging people and he's going to be charging them based on the distance. It says here that, well, the equation you came up with is the cost is equal to 1.5 times by the distance plus 2. For this here, it tells you that the distance is 5 miles. We know that. We know the distance is 5 miles. So if we know the distance is 5 miles, all we do is we replace D with 5. So we would have C equals 1.5 times by 5. So it's 1.5 times D. We're replacing D with 5. And then add 2. So 1.5 fives or pound fifty times 5. Think about it whichever you want. Half 5 and then add it on to 5. Either way, you get 7.5, so you'd have 7.5 add 2, which is 9.5. Obviously, this question's about money, so it's going to be a money answer, so you don't just leave it as 9.5, write it as £9.50. And that will be your answer. The five-mile journey will cost £9.50 in Tom's taxis. Thank you, Tom. Beep, beep. Bye. Hopefully that has helped looking over some of those past paper questions. There are plenty more past papers out there for you to try, or you can try these ones again. You'll find questions are very similar year upon year. Just work through them. Just practice. There is also a Remember Remember check-up exercise in the TJ National 5 textbook. If you want to use that, it will be good practice. Practice, 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 practice.